Let's have a look today at repositories in Spring Data JDBC. Recently I got asked by few people what is a repository, so let's start with that. A repository is a concept from domain-driven design. Martin Fowler on his website describes repository in the following way. Repository mediates between the domain and data mapping layers using a collection-like interface for accessing domain objects. So my simplified version of it that I think many Java slash Spring developers can relate to is that repository acts as a collection of entities, in particular, aggregate roots. So to this collection, you can add objects, you can delete them, you can also update them, and you can, of course, also take the data out of this collection. In practice, it means that the repository is an interface, is an abstraction over the data storage we use. So almost all Spring Data projects come with a built-in support for repositories that provide a very convenient way to interact with the data store without really writing too much code. Spring Data comes out of the box with a CRUD repository and paging and sorting repository. CRUD repository is a very, very simple one that provides like all the basic methods for creating, reading, updating and deleting, like fetching all the items from the database, fetching item only by ID and so on. Paging and sorting is like an enhanced version of CRUD repository where we can fetch the data sorted by a particular field or we can also do the pagination so we can skip some elements, take only some portion of elements, I think it's quite self-explanatory. So now to the point, Spring Data JDBC. Spring Data JDBC comes with a support for CRUD repository only. So for any of these basic methods like creating, reading, updating and deleting, you don't really need to write any SQL code, you just, just use an existing method and it works out of the box. You can also write custom queries that don't necessarily map exactly to the entities, and then you can map them to your custom objects. If the returned result set from the database matches the object structure, it will try to map it using the like built-in row mappers. But if you want to use something custom, you can also provide a custom row, ma row mapper uh, as a parameter to the query annotation. So what about paging and sorting? Paging and sorting are like extremely common use cases and not having paging and sorting repository means that we have to implement it by ourselves. There is no problem with passing a limit and offset through just the method parameters, but I realized that it's not possible or at least I couldn't really find a way to pass the order in a reliable way. Because as far as I can see, JDBC prevents you from binding these parameters to the order field. So although it is possible to make it custom bean and pass this method parameters to this bean, probably, it seems like there's like too much work in comparison to what we are used to from other Spring Data projects. Of course, if you have like only a couple of use cases where you just order by some field and it's only this one field and it never changes, then you can just hard code it in the query itself. But if you need something more flexible, then I think the Spring Data JDBC is just not really working well in this case. Another thing that is missing are derived queries. So in most of the Spring Data projects, we were able just to create a method name in the repository, like find by title and then just pass the title as a method parameter and Spring Data would generate the query by itself using its own internal magic. In Spring Data JDBC it doesn't work, for every custom query we need to write a little bit of SQL. I don't think honestly it's a big issue, I think I prefer to have the SQL written anyway by myself so at least I know what is happening over there. And even if you don't prefer to write it by yourself, it's not really much work. 
In Spring Data JDBC 1.1, we will be able additionally to passing the custom row mapper, we will be able, also able to pass custom result set extractor. And then it means that we have an ability not just to map each row returned from the database individually, but we can take the whole result set and then map it at once to something different. And this comes really handy when we need to map a result of the joint queries when there is a portion of the data that it's duplicated in each and every row. Okay, this was a quick one. I'm actually looking forward to hear your experiences with Spring Data JDBC. If you use it in production, do you just play with it? Do you like it or not? What are the features that are missing the most? What I find really cool about this project, it's actually like most of the other Spring projects that you can get in touch with the project maintainer. So whenever you file a Jira issue, uh, you can be sure that you will get some response. Also, if you ask a question on Stack Overflow, you can check under Spring Data JDBC tag. You can be almost sure that Jens Schauder will reply as he replies to like all these questions and the, the responses are like very, very deep and detailed. So I will actually encourage you to get engaged into this project if you, if you are interested in, in, in Java and databases. Okay, thank you for watching. And as usual, if you like this video, click the like button because the more likes it gets, the more it spreads in the world. So probably more people will see it. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, you should probably subscribe to this channel. Thank you.